Richard Branson, thank you for joining us. We appreciate it. Thank you. First of all, let me say this is a tragedy. Our hearts, our thoughts are with the families of both pilots. Uh, we're all very, very sorry this happened. And I want to begin with the condition of the co-pilot, Peter Siebold. How is pilot Peter Siebold doing at this hour? Uh, he's doing remarkably well, thank you. Um, and we're, we're hopeful that he'll be out of hospital soon, um, walking um, uh, and uh, and and his old, old smiling self, hopefully soon back again. So, um, no, no, um, no major injuries that can't be fixed. Wow, that that is very good to hear. What about the pilot who perished, yeah. pilot Michael Alsbury? He's 39 years old, and you said that the bravery of these pilots cannot be overstated. What can you tell us about this man? Uh, he, he is. A, well, he he is. A, uh, sorry, he, he was an extremely brave man, um, and as all test pilots are, extreme, extremely brave people. Um, he had a young family. He was married, um, and and his family loved him enormously. I mean, he had a sis, sister that loved him enormously, parents that loved him enormously. Um, uh, but he was a test pilot, and test pilots are trying to discover things that um, that the you know 400. Um, engineers um, and technicians on the ground uh, can't necessarily see on the ground, and mm -hmm. the test pilots uh, push the, air, the, 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 the aircraft to the limit uh, before um, finally um, members of the travelling public are allowed on it. And, and obviously, um, something happened um, that, that um, w which we will learn about um, to make sure it can never happen again. This was the 35th time that Spaceship Two had flown freely. An investigation is ongoing. I know it can take up to a year, but what do you know at this point in time about what could have caused this? Well, the NTSB are, are a wonderful group of people who um, investigate crashes, um, and they have a very strict rule, and that is no speculation. Um, and in fact, you know, the British press have, I think, rather irresponsibly, you know, sp speculated that it might have been rockets exploding, it might have been fuel tanks exploding. In fact, you know, there might have been an explosion. Uh, the the NTSB have firmly ruled all that out, um, and uh, and have made it clear that they're coming down to um, one particular area um, that or one particular thing that they, they believe happened. Um, but if you don't mind, I'm going to leave it to the N NTSB to uh, let you know um, exactly what it is they think happened, and, and, and then we'll wait for their definitive, their definitive decision. I know you are limited in what you can say due to this investigation, but you are you know, at the helm of Virgin Galactic. You know about the science behind this. What the NTSB investigation has found thus far is that the feathers or those tail wings on Spaceship Two were unlocked earlier than they should have been before it even reached orbit. What could that have done to this rocket? Again, I'd, I'd rather not go into details because uh, uh, because the NTSB are, are the people are the experts at this. But as as they have stated, uh, it looks like um, it, it, it looks like they were unlocked early, and that's what they've said. Uh, and if that happened, um, you know, something catastrophic could have happened as a result, and 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 and, and obviously did. So we, we we need the NTSB to rule about the details, and I really don't want to get drawn on that because, um, uh, be, be, because I'm, A, not allowed to, and, 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 and I'm, I'm not an expert. You have called this a massive setback and a horrible day. Do you still want to take civilians to space? We are at the start of building a space line for Earth. Um, uh, the what, 400 wonderful technicians and engineers um, have committed their lives to, uh, in, the, in the pursuit of human exploration and, and advancement, and to build a commercial spaceship industry um, that will deliver transformative things for people back here on Earth. So, mm. you know, point to point travel at tremendous speeds, um, you know, satellites that will transform our lives back here. So, um, we're not the sort of people that are going to give up. 
And I know that uh, Mike would not want us to give up. Um, he would have been the first back in uh, the new, new spacecraft, um, you know, when it's built. Um, and um, we will continue until we've tested our spacecraft. Um, uh, it, um, and and, and once, once they're well and truly tested and we've ironed out every little detail, um, then I'll, I will feel comfortable to go up well, um, and I'll, I'll feel comfortable about other people going up. Let me ask you this, Richard. A year ago, when I interviewed you in the Mojave Desert, right next to, to Spaceship Two, I asked you if the risk is worth it. And you said, unless you risk something, the world stays still. Given this, is the risk still worth it? Yes, the risk is worth it. Um, and, and as I say, Mike would have, would have been the first to say that. I'm sure his parents and his wife and his sisters would not say that. But, um, but test pilots would say that because they know the risk they're taking, um, that they know the importance of what they're doing. We know the importance of what we're doing. Um, and, uh, you know, if, we, if, if test pilots hadn't taken risks, we wouldn't have had um, the 747, um, you, know, the, the, you know, two of the comets blew up in the early days of airline travel, and, and now um, airline travel is as safe as anything. Um, we've, we've got to go through the, the difficult testing stage of creating a space line um, in order to make it safe for um, travelers who want to travel on that space line in the years ahead. Um, and, um, and, you know, we, 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 we will persevere and, and, um, and, and we will succeed. Will you still be the first, along with your family and a few others, to take that first civilian flight into space, Richard? There is no way that I would ask um, others to travel on Virgin Galactic um, unless I'd been the first to go myself. Um, uh, and therefore, I will certainly be the first to travel. Um, if, it, if, it's, uh, if I didn't feel it was safe enough for myself, um, I, I, um, I, I would not ask other people to take a flight. So, um, you know, we, we will finish building the next spaceship. Um, we will learn from what happened to the first spaceship. Um, we will test it many, many times um, before, um, before we go with, you know, many test pilots flying it. Um, and then I will go. And then um, the 800 astronauts who um, have been so supportive and have signed up, signed up to go um, will start to go. You, um, and it will be still the start of a whole new space era um, that, um, uh, you know, obviously, as, as, as happened with NASA, uh, with tragedy in, 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 in its history. You told me just a, a month or so ago that the first civilian flight you were hoping would go up in early 2015. How far does this push that, that back? I think it would be um, too soon for me to talk about uh, dates right now. Um, you know, all, all that matters is that we can, you know, that, is that the 400 people are working there uh, push on, mm -hmm. work enormously hard um, to get the new spaceship finished. Um, and. You know, when we're ready and, we're, and, and, and when we're completely sure that we have a, a, a safe vehicle to go, um, we, we will go. Let me ask you this. CNN aviation analyst Miles O'Brien this morning said that you and Virgin Galactic, he believes, have, quote, consistently underestimated to the public what it takes to get to space, the risk involved. He said that there has been really a, a gloss painted on this that does not reflect reality. What is your response to that? There have been some incredible things said over the last two days since the accident, um, mainly by the British press, uh, not, not generally speaking by the American press. Um, people have talked about um, uh, rockets blowing up, um, and people have analyzed at death why the rocket blew up. They've talked about fuel tanks blowing up. They've talked about explosions. Um, and, and lots of self-proclaimed experts have gone on television to explain why all this happened, when, of course, none of it happened. Um, and, you know, when, when you have incidents, you're going to get people who are quick to criticize, um, you know, what is a pioneering program. Um, we have 400 of the best engineers in the world uh, working on this. Um, uh, they are uh, diligent, hardworking, um, doing something which is cutting edge. What? 
um, and I have their, I, I, I support them 100 percent. So, I, um, you know, we, 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 we have to accept the, the occasional knock, but we'll, we'll, we'll brush it down and move forward. I think what, what, what Miles O'Brien is saying is that the, the risk, he believes, was not communicated enough to the general the general public, Richard, do you think, I mean, going forward, is that going to change? Are you going to talk more about the, the inherent risks in this, or do you believe that that has been fully communicated? Bert Rutar, who was the genius behind um, the design of um, the spaceship, uh, compared uh, creating a space line to, uh, to the similarity to creating um, airline travel back in the 1920s, 1930s. Um, uh, and and, and I, would, I would stick with that. I would say that the risks are similar to um, flying across the Atlantic in the, in the 1920s, 1930s. Mm. Not as good as they are you know, in, 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 um, uh, in the 21st century, um, but, still, um, but still good. Um, and, that, and, and we want to make it as good as that and hopefully, hopefully even better in the years to come. You are nearing completion of the Series 2 of uh, the spaceship to another rocket just like this one. Will you send anyone into space, any test pilots into space on that rocket before the NTSB investigation is complete? The NTSB um, have told us to push ahead um, based on what they've discovered. Um, they said they, they, they um, and, uh, and not to hold up the program. Hmm. Um, but obviously, um, you know, we, 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 you know, we believe we know um, what happened, um, but we need the NTSB um, to tell us exactly, you know, to, um, ex you know, to exactly what happened. And I, I don't think it's going to take long. We, you know, we've, we, it's been, it's, we, they've got right down to, um, uh, you know, to pinpointing uh, the issue, and I don't think it's going to take us long to find out um, uh, exactly what happened and whether uh, we have to do anything ourselves um, to fix it. I'd like to ask you about your dream. I mean, you have said to me time and time again, this is the most personal project for you that you have worked on in your career. This is the toughest thing that you have ever done. And some have said this is about people spending a quarter million dollars, rich people, celebrities going to space. But you have said to me, this is about space exploration. This is about science. This is about point to point travel, New York to Sydney one day in an hour. This is about building hotels in, in space. What is this about for you? This is about, as I say, creating uh, the most incredible space line that can do the most incredible things for uh, people back here on Earth. And, um, and you know, we have a dream to, uh, uh, to turn this, turn Virgin Galactic into, into uh, an organization that, um, that where, where people here on Earth can marvel at it, where people can back, on, back here on Earth can sh share in it and experience it. And, um, and uh, so it will start by um, people who can afford it uh, going to space. That will give us the, uh, the engine of resource to then go and do a, a whole incredible range of incredible things. I mean, for instance, we're looking at putting up, you know, thousands of satellites around the Earth so that the three billion people who don't have mobile phones or Internet access or Wi-Fi access can get, can get it. It will also transform the cost that other people who do have mobile phone, phones pay for their phones. Um, we, you know, we, we're, we're looking uh, um, at point-to-point -point travel uh, at, in an environmentally friendly way, but in, at incredible speeds. And, um, and these are just some of the many, many things, I think, that, um, that can come out of um, you know, this, the, what I believe to be a wonderful project and what uh, Mike Allsbury believed to be mm -hmm. A wonderful project, um, and you know we'll continue. We'll continue in his memory and in his name. I want to ask you briefly before we end, Richard, about the new fuel mix that was used in this spaceship, a plastic-based fuel. You had recently just switched over to this fuel mix. Uh, can you confirm this is the first time that Spaceship Two had flown with that fuel? And do you believe at this point that that may have had anything to do with the crash? Uh, the NTSB have completely ruled out um, fuel tanks 
uh, and, and have said there was no explosion and uh, have ruled, ruled out anything, any concerns about the rocket. I mean, you know, there, there, as, there have been a lot of self-proclaimed experts who have gone on to a lot of TV shows and uh, mm -hmm. written in the press, um, a lot of baloney, um, and, um, and we've just had to take it on the chin because, mm -hmm. uh, you know, we, we haven't been able to say anything. We've had to leave it to the NTSB to say it. Right. Um, but, look, we, we have 400 of the best engineers in the world, and they're not going to put, they're not going to take any risks. They're not going to do anything, uh, anything on board a, a spaceship. Uh, that they wouldn't fly, want to fly on themselves. Why would they? That you know, we spent 10 years building this program. Um, so, um, you know, so as the NTSB come out with um, uh, with their statements, um, you know, hopefully those people who've you know um, hmm. spoken, I think, so unfairly about um, about the program uh, will take their words back. And Richard, let me end on this. I had the unique opportunity of meeting a lot of the customers who have purchased those tickets to fly with Virgin Galactic in the Mojave Desert last year. People of all, of all walks of life, young and old from all over the world, are, are your customers standing by you? And I wonder what they have said to you over the past few days. I have never had such overwhelming support and, and everybody at Virgin Galactic have never had such overwhelming support. I mean, we've literally had hundreds of uh, astronauts who are waiting to fly um, send us messages saying uh, that they're still 100 percent committed um, that um, and we've even had uh, two astronauts on on the day of the accident um, sign up and and send us send us the checks just to say um, uh, you know that they want to see this happen and they want to they want to show their commitment so um, and of course millions of members of the public have been um, you know over, overwhelmingly supportive so um, you know, so on the back of that, um, I think it's given, um, you know, a wonderful people um, uh, who are working so hard on it and all the people that scaled, um, you, know, um, you know, great comfort. Uh, we had a, a 400 people hug <laughs> when, I, when I was um, uh, uh, in, um, in Mojave Desert um, and, um, and, you know, we're very, very grateful to all the support. So, Richard Branson, we are very, very sorry for this tragic loss of life, and I'm glad to hear that pilot Peter Siebold is recovering remarkably well. Our thoughts are with him and his family. Thank you, sir, for the time.